Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 443. Each week yeah, we meet here to uh, review the questions and answers given on the Dumb uh, SEO Questions Facebook group. With us tonight we have David Rosaire, Tim Kappa, Masataki Wasa, we almost had Michael Fisher Kirschner when we had to go. Um, okay. Tim is uh, based in uh, Corby, about 100 miles north of uh, London. Uh, he is uh, uh, the CEO of onlineownership.com. He's also a Google product expert in the uh, um, Google My Business uh, community. Masataki Wasa is webmaster of wasaweb.net. Uh, he's also a Google product expert in uh, uh, the uh, AdSense community. And um, he's based in Wimbledon, a suburb of London. Um, and uh, David uh, is based in West Sussex, um, the sunny south of the UK. And uh, he's also uh, a leading internet marketer. All right, uh, our first question tonight um, is, um, uh, let me see. Right, it's, um, what is a reasonable number is the title. Um, it's lodged by J. Gwendolyn Arana. Um, oh, no, it went, that was an answer, sorry. Um, it was posted by June Delasse Jr. Um, and uh, it, the, the question is, being West Webmaster Guide, uh, says to limit the number of pages to a reasonable number. Uh, what is that reasonable number? Forty-two, I believe. <laughs> Sorry, it had to be said. Um, in what context? I come back. It's a question with a question. Um, I don't know. I don't understand the question. Well, in, in the, the, the webmaster guide, the, Google also has a webmaster guide, but they're saying that um, um, in, in their advice, they're saying limit it to a number of um, pages, to a reasonable number. Um, and of course, uh, Really, the, 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 there is no answer to that, except um, a reasonable number would be what a, a, a reasonable reader um, would, um, would, would agree with. If, if it suits, suits the reader, it must be reasonable. I would say that a reasonable number is uh, as much as it needs to... Uh to perform better than its uh, its competitors. All right, let's let's say uh, that. <laughs> um, by the way, a normal uh, uh, screen is not up. I, I had to uh, switch the screen because we have a little bit of a technical difficulty. Well, I'm just trying to find the relevant passage in the Bing Webmaster Guide. And it says, limit the number of web pages, limit the number of pages on your website, a reasonable number. Avoid duplicate content within your site. And so on and so forth. So, in a sense, the question is, what is unreasonable, isn't it? And that the document seems to point to um, duplicative content, as they call it. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Mr. Well, Go ahead. Duplicated content is unreasonable. Yes, I'll go along with that. 
I'm still confused by the question. Oh, well, look, let's try that question number two and we'll see if that's a reasonable one. It was published or uh, posted by Al Bakito, um, and it's titled, Would it be a problem if I simply copy pasted it? Um, Al Bakito went on to say, uh, so I wanted to keep a mini section of say 500-ish words at the bottom of most of my info articles where I'd lead the reader um, to the sales page. Now, if I simply copy pasted this section, would that be a problem? Now, I'm confused, David. You, you can tell me if you're not. Mute button, David. You're confused. Um, no. This is, this is, uh, I don't know why uh, you need 500 words to uh, to have a call to action. Um, On that point, um, he does say that um, uh, it wouldn't be anything longer than 150 words uh, in a later okay. comment. That, that's further in, is it? Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, yes. Greg, Greg Gifford says, why would you ever need a 500 words here? Yeah, yeah, that's what hits me. Um, I, I don't think that would be a problem at all. Um, this is this is like uh, you know you you, you have um, you have um, footer matter, don't you, uh, on most websites? Um, if that would upset the uh, the apple cart, the SEO apple cart, then uh, that would go. I think Google's very uh, very good at uh, picking out this sort of uh, standing content that uh, that we feel that we need to put on most pages um i think the the question is are you doing more than a 500 words or 150 words um as unique content on each page i hope you are uh, you may um yeah i don't think it's a problem let's stop waffling let's say i don't think it's a problem <laughs> okay Right, let's move on to number question number three. Um, oh, but next, before I do, um, uh, Stop Big Bridge Trust, Trust Flow, who answers so many questions um, for us uh, through the week, um, uh, and our, our, our team who um, do answer so many questions um, through the week. Um, uh, making uh, dumb SEO questions such a, a, a valuable resource. But uh, Stockbridge said, uh, Stephen is correct. That that won't be a problem. He's referring earlier to uh, um, a post from Stephen. He, he said, that I'm, uh, I'm assuming you mean in the realm of duplicate content using a pay, page penalty. If so, the answer is no, it's not a problem, as David uh, just pointed out. Um, but um, anyway, Stockbridge said, here's a trick you can use to actually help make it clear to Google so it doesn't get confused. Wrap your call to action block inside a pair of tags, um, e.g., uh, for example, here is the repeated call to action content and the button that appears on every single page. This signals to, signals to Google that it's an aside, it's on the page, but it's not truly part of the content or what makes the page uh, important or unique. Ooh. Yeah. Okay, let's go to number three on our run list. So just um, go back to that point. Say, say again. Um, going back to the aside point. You know, I think aside will work, but could it be a section and labeled content info? for ARIA, I just don't, I just don't know immediately, but I think it might be possible to mark it as a section as well as a side. I don't know which one's correct though. Um, I probably would go for a side actually. Okay. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, Masataki. Number three on our run list, uh, it's, it's titled, I have a page that is no longer up to date. Oh. Um, and it's for, posted by Tay Jun Ru. Um, and uh, they go on to say, uh, hi all, what would be the best way to approach pages with events that have passed or content that is no longer up to date? Is there merit in keeping them for SEO purposes or is it better to take them down if they are no longer relevant? Um, I think these are two potentially two separate things, aren't they? Um, a date, uh, an event that's passed um, could have value to someone searching. Um, I want to know whether I've missed the Upper Dicker v Village Fate. Um, so I search on that and I find it's last weekend. That's that's of value. Um, if if the uh, web uh, if the webmaster takes it down, then I won't know that. So I think there's um, less uh, less case to take the um, the past events down than the out of date other sorts of out of date content. You know, for example, your uh, Mark Three. Uh, pink fluffy elephant when the Mark IV has come along. Uh, <laughs> so um, I think the, the Mark III pink fluffy elephant should be, uh, that the content should be changed or perhaps a 301 redirect um, where the, um, yeah, so that, that, that's, I, I think they're two se separate things. Thank you, David. Yeah, it depends on the nature of the event. Um, but one thing you can do, for instance, is to have a write-up of the event. Say, you know, it was a great success, so many people attended, this and that happened, and put it in the archive. Again, that would be... You could, you could also put a sign-up for our next event. Exactly. So, you know, it's a, if people might, if it's a recurring event, if it's an annual event, then people want to know what happened in previous years. If it's the same, let's say, theatre production, then people would like to know what you know what kind of um, staging it was before, and so and so forth. So I think there's a lot you can do with past events, but we probably need to have a bit of write up or something to ensure that there is substance or meaning to that. Excellent, thank you, Mesa. All right, um, let's have a look at um, uh, number uh, four on our run list. Uh, it's um, from Mahmoud Fathi, um, and it's a simple question: Is self cannot cannot localizing every page in a website, even the duplicate pages, good for? SEO or um, the duplicate pages should be canonicalized to the main page. Um, and I must point out Michael Martinez uh, um, said uh, um, in, in, a, in a comment uh, through the week um, on, on this question, uh, duplicate pages should be canonicalized to one version. So if you have um, this and he gives an example of slash homepage slash alpha slash duplicate of alpha then both alpha and the duplicate of alpha should be canonicalized to alpha uh, slash home can be canonicalized to itself but it doesn't really matter in most cases um your thoughts guys i think um michael has um has said what I was going to say, so I should shut up. I don't think there's any harm in self-canonicalizing because third-party websites might uh, add parameters, for instance, um, to their URI. Thank and, you, Mesa. Yeah. All right. Um, now let's move on. Um, uh, 
to number five. Um, and it's a question, it's, it's which of these uh, options is best for SEO and why? Goodness me, this is going to be a hard one to read. Um, Nikki Lee said, um, which of these options is best for SEO and why? Option A, site menu hierarchy is three levels deep. Um, actually, I won't try and read that, that out. Um, um, it can be seen on, on the uh, Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Um, it starts off, uh, option A is www.xyzcarsforsale.com slash Los Angeles dash um, slash uh, Hollywood. Oh, goodness me. Give me a break. Um, and option B, the, the, the main site. Oh, goodness. Yeah, and Christine Hansen said, as a rule of thumb, if possible, the fewer levels, the better. Your thoughts, guys? Yeah, well, yeah, as, as a rule of thumb, the fewer levels, the better, that's for certain. Um, but on big sites, sometimes it's not that easy to... Um, create the navigation, but it can be. I mean, you just go and look at any large sort of department store kind of website or brand, um, and you can have quite a big, you know, sort of um, menu under simple, a simple top line men's, but then when you hit the drop down, you've got the entire thing there. So there are ways of doing it. But also, if your tools, um, and of course, like, uh, for example, I use SEMrush, if your tools are saying takes more than three clicks to visit this page, you know, if it's visible in search, if it's visible around the queries, and it's not exactly your main, um, <laughs> You know, your seller, you tend to push your higher profit margin, uh, your higher profit margin stuff at the top. Um, you know, if people are finding it, if it's visible in search, if it's, you know, um, then I think you, you don't need to lose too much sleep over it. But ideally, users, if they're coming in, should be able to find it. But if it's not exactly your main profit margin, your main seller, like, and it can be found in search. I don't think you've got too much of a headache there. Excellent, Tim. May I um, throw in option C? I'm just thinking of me as a as a buyer. I'm looking for a new car or a used car. So maybe it's xyzcarsforsale.com Los Angeles new cars forward slash um, Beverly Hills or blah, blah, blah. Uh, new cars, Hollywood, um, and similarly with uh, uh, with used cars, uh, used cars, and then locations that you can buy used cars. Yeah, that's a good point. Why don't you just uh, at the point of entry, used or new, and then when you click through to the new and used, then that then that becomes yeah, like David said, your your breakdown between your area, location, or type, make model. Yeah, totally. Yeah, and there's other, 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 other ways to break down too, like uh, the, the cars um, might be four-wheel drive or they might be two-wheel drive. Yeah, um, it could be price. <laughs> pardon? It could be by price. You know, people have budgets. Yeah, or it could buy could be by brand or it could be by electric or it could be by diesel or whatever um <laughs> but you know how deep do you want to go with your, your hierarchy because there are times when you know this, this could this would go way down um if you start saying uh, you know particular brand um different diff different power source different engine size whatever um, but yeah, 
Yes, well, um, at this point, Nikki Lee is uh, wishing he had he or she hadn't uh, hadn't done this. Anyway, let's go to number six. Question six on our run list. It's it's does SEO work? Um, and it was posted by Pete Robinson. Um, well, of course it works. Otherwise, we wouldn't wouldn't be here. Uh, um, only if I do it for you is the answer. Oh, right. right. <laughs> anyway, um, does SEO work? And Roger Monty uh, has uh, um, joined in. He said, um, aside from the obvious Google images, um, Google uses images in rich results um so they're a benefit now maybe our, our um maybe our system that's is an answer to the next question i think jim well i'm, I'm just reading it um on 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 there uh, okay are they asking whether benefit images are benefit no 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 they're the um uh, Roger Monty's answer is in relation to the next question on the questions list. So there must be some glitch in when the the questions list is compiled. Yeah. Um, uh, Facebook um, it does make it difficult for us. They're constantly changing. Uh, I uh, think maybe it's not deliberately aimed at us, but um, we're a, um, a collateral damage. Um, all right. Um, in, in general terms, let, let's just say that uh, SEO does work and uh, we are the proof of it. Um, all right. Uh, question seven on our list, should my images be marked no index and or no follow? Um, uh, why? The only, no, 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 no. You want, you know, it depends. Like, if your if if your images are put into the page, um, and to the product or to whatever, no, you you want them found, you know. Um, you'd be surprised. Uh, like, I guess it depends what they are. Like, I have one client who has an adult business, and their images are obviously no index because uh, <laughs> those you, they don't want appearing because they are images of the people. Um, so that is the only instance. I mean. Like today, for example, uh, one of my clients who literally does deal with just images, um, uh, <laughs> had a clean up of the site without telling me and deleted a shed load, almost 500 um, properties, um, which I'm trying to re recover via 404s. And actually, the way I'm doing it, it's because the pages obviously no longer exist, but the way I'm doing it is I'm using, um, I'm, I'm searching via images because people have linked to them, Pinterested them, did all sorts of things with these images, right? So now I can then go, ah, oh, this page belongs in this section purely because of the images. Um, so, but what I'm saying is it's those images are actually used, shared, you know, so it all depends on your site. It really depends on your site. If they're just a random stock image of, you know, that you've used to chuck in a header, yeah, not, not really, not so much. But if you've had a photographer create them, you've branded them, they are part of your whole brand, yeah, use them. It's part of your identity. Excellent. I think we've got a technical issue with um, 
our run list. The, the, the previous question was incorrectly listed and this one too. Um, all right, um, I, I think we'll have to, oh, well, actually, we can, we can chip in and um, um, yeah, it'll, it'll still work out. All right. Um, <clears throat> looking at question nine on our run list, um, <clears throat> it's titled, Does It Benefit SEO? It was posted by Tanzila Ashraf and uh, he or she said uh, in Google Search Central uh, YouTube channel, Daniel Weisberg uh, discussed um, about discuss the Google Merchant Center. He said that you may also want to upload your complete product inventory to Google Merchant Center, both for products sold online and offline. Uh, this approach uh, has a few advantages. You can update data faster, like prices and stock levels. You can supply richer data, like uh, locality information for inventory. And you have more control over data by pushing it to Google when it changes rather than waiting for Google to crawl your website. And in case you have implemented structured data and uploaded the feed to Merchant Center, Google will generally prioritize the data from the feed. Not sure if all oh, that's um, accurate. What are we doing? Are we reading an article or a question? Um, 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 it's on our run list, Tim, it's number nine. No, yeah, number nine. What's the question? Oh, okay. So, a good point. Um, <clears throat> Tim Kappa said, um, if you define SEO as better visible to you online, um, then yes. Um, I think we're in, um, it's not going to, it's not going to. Oh, I remember this one. Oh, basically she was asking, yeah, I think she was asking a question essentially on like, should I, should I add my products? And then it was like, yeah, definitely. And then it went to another question and then she was, she repeatedly asked the same thing a few times about, um, oh, uh, I can't remember if she had more products on a, the same products on different <clears throat> things. And it's like, uh, if the same SKU codes are the same, well, mm, essentially you should just have the one if it's the same product. But of course, um, uh, it doesn't matter if your your feed creates a product and it, and it fits within the merchant it will it will be displayed um i suppose because you just i don't know why you would have a different one but i guess it's just a different variation of the, what the actual product is if it was a pink one or a blue one that's fine and it'll be displayed but then she went on to another question which i think they should not really sure on how to even implement it so i think she should go to actual google merchants have the developers read all the documentation there and then and then from there because of course there's there's a lot of development documentation some cms's already are built and can validate straight with google merchant and some can't so you will need to check with your developers Thank you, Tim. All right. Um, boy, boy. Yeah, quality control failed us uh, um, in this run list, I, I tell you. Um, I'll leave it up to you guys. Um, we've got five questions left. Um, do you do you want to, to do them? Um, except that you'll you'll have to ignore in most cases the community answers um, because that they that the, the list is skewed, which is a bit embarrassing. No, it seems to be fine. It was only in question um, six and seven that it had the mix up. Okay. All from right. what I can see. All right, uh, yeah, fine. Um, 
Well, um, question number 10, um, is buying an expired domain good for SEO? Um, <clears throat> the question is, uh, um, is it considered risky or black hat? Uh, he said, I've never dealt with the situation uh, as I've always worked with existing brands and, and domains. I want to start my own affiliate site and have seen talk of this. Your thoughts, guys? Mm. So your first, what, uh, what, what are you thinking about creating an affiliate site? I didn't see this question. Uh, but first off, never, never be put off in trying something ever, you know, go for it. But uh, with affiliates, um, you the, the, the real trick is one, finding the product, right? That's that's your thing. Finding the product that one you can fulfill. Um, two, there's a decent margin on it, right? That is the one you also need to find. Or finding two or three products which fit together because remember they need to be on the same site. You're still going to need to be creating a lot of content around these, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's easier if they're not too diverse. If they can mesh together, and then you've got three or four different products on that affiliate site that is going to mesh together, that then combined create a decent um, margin for you. Um, so those are things that, that you really want to look at. Um, but yeah, don't get put off. But I would do a little bit of research on looking at what the product is um, and things like that. Uh, you know, and the margins, the fulfillment, who the company is. The last thing you want to do is go and find a decent product with some good traffic to it, not many affiliates. And then you start building the whole thing out. And then you just realize that it's it, like these guys can't fulfill it, right? So you might be getting the thing, but people then start dropping off and then the bad, you know what I mean? So yeah, you've got to research it, but don't get put off on, by not doing it. Thank you, Tim. And there's um, a lot of, you know, get out there online. There are a lot of affiliate marketer SEOs. I know they've just had a massive world conference in Dubai two months back. Like, there's a lot of brilliant people out there, top of the line affiliate marketers. Um, start following some of them and then start listening to some of the podcasts things like that start picking stuff up there's a lot of tricks it's a it's like a whole different market you know what i mean but yeah um on the matter of the expired domain um i'm always a bit dubious about this um the question i i think uh jason uh has said a quite a, an appetite thing here um you know what what was the what was the domain what was on the domain before um you know not only topic wise because um the kind of domain that tends to be looked at as an expired domain um tends to be something that fits what you want to put on it uh, you wouldn't be uh, trying to buy something that wouldn't, um, if you see what I mean. So, um, yeah, you need you need to do your quality control on it. Was it was it a good site? Was it something used for something nefarious? Um, you know, Wayback Machine is a good place, um, and see if you can find out what kind of. Um, what kind of links um, yeah, totally. were done to it and away from it? Yeah, totally. I mean, David mentions way back. I mean, a lot of affiliate marketers actually buy the domains, um, use way back and actually rebuild the site directly off way back. Um, you, but you've still got to check what, whether it became untenable and toxic. But yeah, you know, that's also one of the strategies. But you've got to be careful. That's a very good point, isn't it? Isn't it, uh, Tim? The, the, why was the why was the site given up? 
why was it stopped why did they stop maintaining it how how and why did it become untenable uh, because if it was profitable they'd still be running it <clears throat> probably yep all right um uh, let's um go to well this is a bit intriguing it's uh, the title is will removing the landing page hurt our seo um it's from elizabeth redman uh, um, she goes on to say uh, the company i work for recently acquired a similar business however as the story goes the relationship has gone south and the business owner is no longer uh, with us and uh, is instead opening a new business um, within proximity to ours will removing the landing page that has his information hurt our seo uh, is it best to route uh, his um, landing page to our site or is it okay to remove it altogether thanks in advance I think this is a um, this is a and it depends uh, answer. Um, it depends on um, what um, how you how you split up from this this guy. What uh, what legal um, matters have been put in place? Um, are you allowed to uh, to to, to um, remove it or redirect it? Um, what makes sense for your business and your brand even um so i think it's it, seo is is kind of at the bottom of this um and you should be looking at the the business and legal um matters before uh before seo yeah um especially as it's not amicable so one wonders how the former business partner feels about his name being on the site. And in the, I mean, how important is his name in this particular setup? I think it comes down to that, doesn't it? Because if he's setting up a rival company and trading in his name and people looking for his services, then people should end up on his site because he no longer works with your company. So I think in the long term, you probably want to remove it anywhere. But as um, David mentioned, and as Dr. Rich Truslow answered in the community or in the group, you know, it really depends becomes a far bigger problem in that it's a business and potentially legal issue. Thank you, Mr. Uh, anybody else? All right, so question 12 on our run list. Um, it's titled, why would Google favor one over the other? Um, and um, it's from Nikki Lee. Um, Nikki goes on to say a question about this scenario. Client A is uh, 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 CaliforniaHomesForSale.com. Uh, let's say this site has a, a, a lot of good content about all the major cities in California, like Los Angeles, San Francisco, San Diego, Sacramento, etc. Site B, Los Angeles uh, HomesForSale.com. Um, let's say this site has a lot of good content about the city of Los Angeles only. Uh, let's assume that the content about Los Angeles is equally good on both sites. Let's assume that both sites have the same domain authority and have the same backlink strength. Um, which of these uh, two sites would rank better on Google? when user, uh, users are searching for homes to buy in Los Angeles. Why would Google favor one uh, over the other? Um, um, quality of content. 
relevance to the to the search to the search um it's i'm sorry it's a bit of a silly question um it doesn't really matter it's all a bit it's all a it's all a bit academic um yeah it's you know. a flip a coin situation in that you know no two sites are going to be exactly the same um so it's an artificial question um which really doesn't exist as i suppose the the question is whether you should have a, a broader domain name or a very specific domain name ah is it a question saying should i have um los angeles homes for sale san francisco homes for sale san diego homes for sale sacramento homes for sale that's how I understood the question. So the implication is uh, other you know. Okay. Well, I'm I'm being uh, I'm being stupid then because I didn't. Oh no! no, no. I didn't. No, no, no. I, I was I read into it. Perhaps I'm reading too much into it. Yeah. But that's how I understood the question. Ah. Because the question does say, "Why would Google favour one over the other?" Not. Should I set up a whole, whole string of? websites rather than one so yeah no the way i, I sort of interpret this question is that you know if you have california homes for sale.com and uh, then you have a very good los angeles section and mm. if you have a los angeles homes for sales for sale.com and that on that is specific to los angeles and if the content is equally good and you know all the parameters are the same which one would perform better I suppose in Los Angeles, you know, or in, in Los Angeles or for people outside Los Angeles looking for property in Los Angeles, I have no idea. But I think it does come back to, you know, to no two sides are exactly the same. So in a sense, I wouldn't worry too much about that. Use a, use a business name that's brandable, use a domain that sticks to people's minds and memory yeah and you know it could well be that from a brand point of view california homes for sale would be the the better one um there could be more value in it than one that only takes part of the uh, part of the state in i suspect it's also down to what uh, google has done Sorry, uh, um, what Google is doing this week to its uh, to its algorithm? Thank you, David. Um, right, the so question thirteen is: Are link farms actually bad? I think we can skip this one and just say yes, they are actually bad um not if they're organic if they're organic farms are okay well by definition <laughs> they're not, not a lead farm are they <laughs> no i mean organic as in uh as in organic food never mind it was a terrible joke and i oh. shouldn't have to explain it <laughs> um here we have um uh i fear that my current content strategy is rubbish um uh, I'll, I'll leave that to, for you guys to read if you like yeah I'll, i'm happy to read it out if you want you tell me Let me just say, Robbie King said, um, uh, so I've just come across the concept of keyword clusters. <laughs> um, and I feel that my current content strategy is rubbish. Um, I've written each blog around a certain topic, optimizing for a primary keyword and weaving in other keywords that are essentially the primary keyword, but phrased slightly differently. 
is that uh, the same as doing keyword clusters? I don't know what key keyword clusters means. Um, each blog falls under a piece of pillar content. Some blogs are only optimized for one keyword, uh, but that's because I could literally only find one relevant keyword that fitted into a given topic. Am I missing a trick or have I managed to nail the whole keyword clusters thing? Oh, um, okay, question. How is your, um, your site performing at the moment? Um, your current content strategy is perhaps rubbish if it's not, per if it's not performing for you. Uh, not because it uh, doesn't uh, conform to whatever the latest fashion is in uh, writing content. Um, it sounds to me as if you're writing, uh, your, your, your kind of technical underpinning, if you like, of your, uh, your content, uh, your, your content production um, is sensible. Um, but what about the quality? What about how much of it there is when it's, when it's good? Um, because, um, you know, whatever you say about length, and I'm going off on a tangent here, um, it's still the case that longer content tends to outperform um, shorter content, provided the quality is there. Um, so, you know, take a really good look at what you're producing if you're, um, if you're, um content is not performing the way you want it to um it's more likely to be what you're writing and how you're writing in terms of the writing rather than whatever what whatever ideas there are beneath it and i mean you know whether it's uh what are you talking about keyword clusters or pillar content or whatever you know um and, and ash talks about um entities yeah entities fine that that makes sense too but you know the real thing is to write good stuff and lots of it and make sure it's relevant um so if you're you know if you if you understand keyword clusters and you start writing in the same way using the concept of of keyword clusters underpinning what you're writing it's unlikely to make your your poor quality writing any better if indeed uh, sorry make your poor quality writing perform better um if indeed that's your your uh, your writing is is uh, uh is poor quality um i'm not trying to insult your your content i haven't seen any um but again don't get too caught up in this kind of thing get your fundamentals right get your writing right um and then start tweaking it with some of these ideas oh jim's gone <laughs> i think that's me done exactly i mean <laughs> the important thing is to have the right copy and well written copy and if you do write well, then you're not going to repeat the same expression of the words all the time because then it becomes too repetitive. No. Copies should be a rich tapestry, different strands, different words, different expressions. People don't want to read boring stuff. So I think it comes down to write well. And if you do write well, then in a sense, this keyword cluster, et cetera, et cetera, will come naturally because you'll be talking about a particular topic, a particular thing, and you would vary the language because that's what you do. And a well-written copy would naturally do that. You'll naturally have, naturally have variations.
Uh, we may as well uh, read the next question out. Yeah, let's do that. Because this is still recording, so even without Jim. I would just go on for four hours. <laughs> well, I think if he doesn't connect back in, we'll just carry on and then finish off the questions. And then I guess. And then we can sit here and be rude about him. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> live. <laughs> well, it's the last question, question 15. And it states Does the subdomain have the same authority as the main website? Question Does the subdomain have the same authority as the main website? I mean, the time period of ranking will be the same if we do SEO for blogs for example.com instead of example.com slash blog. My developer said we can't create example.com slash blog because of some coding language barrier. So we have to get a new subdomain. Um, um, so that I think the question, if I understood it correctly, <laughs> is that there are at least two in there, aren't there? Yeah, I mean, I think that one is about the time for crawling and indexing. So if you have a subdomain rather than subdirectory, does it matter? And then sort of the bigger question, you know, do they have the same authority, the same level of authority? Yeah, but you oh. can build authority. And I think we've already, I think the issue is uh, the developer said they couldn't have it on the same for some whatever reason. So that's your first issue is like, if it can't be created for whatever reason, it can't be created, but you can build authority on a subdomain. Mm. You can, you, you, you can. I mean, there are thousands of like the originals, you know, hundreds of thousands of examples of massive, massive, massive brands that don't have their news and stuff on the main site. They have it on a subdomain blog dot or whatever. Um, so yes, and you can build on that if that's where all your content is. And of course, it's all leading through to the same place and it's all working together. It, it Yes, it, it can be done. But as starting off, you know, even if it was brand new, it's still not like in that sense, it's not going to have any authority because it doesn't really have anything on it yet. Yeah, I suppose um, in this case, um, they're trying to set up a blog on an existing site, shall we say. So let's say you know, the main site is on www.example.com and they want to start a blog. Because of the setup, they can't put it in a subdirectory, so they have to use something. So I suppose that's yeah. There, there used to be this. There used to be the the worry that that Google said that uh, subdomains were entirely separate, as far as they were concerned, um, from the the main domain. But that's ancient. Um, if I were to, my my advice to my clients is to go for the um, slash blog rather than blog dot example. Purely because um, if Google decides to change the rules again, um, it's unlikely to to have uh, any effect on something that's just you know part of the usual URL structure. Whereas you might possibly um, get uh, get nobbled for having blog.example.com, and that's just a kind of belt and braces attitude to it. But if you can't do forward slash blog, then put it on blog dot um, and um, put lots of good content on there and then, and uh, you'll soon get the authority. Yeah, one thing I might question is the platform itself, because if this is the kind of thing that's restricted and you can do, what other things can you do? So that might be something to investigate. Because you know, if if you can do one thing, there may be other things that you can't do. Or it may be that the developer is not telling the entire truth.
Is that the, was that the last one? Yeah, but we skipped one question. Um, and that, this is one that you will love by the look of it, Tim. Yeah, so I, th I think we could do that, can't we? Because we have Tim, our resident expert. In local. Oh, uh-oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. So question eight. Question eight. Which doesn't fit on my screen. <laughs> okay, <laughs> how to get local traffic and views? And the question is, hi all. I'm a brand I'm brand new to SEO and blog marketing. Would someone advise me how to Google SEO optimizer carpet fitter website that hasn't had any marketing done to it before? This is this to get local traffic and views, i.e. Hampshire and Wiltshire in the UK. Okay, so <laughs> right, so I guess a carpet store. Is it a carpet or just fitter? So I suppose it, oh, carpet fitter. Yeah, it fits carpets. Um, so your your first thing is um, a Google Business Profile, one hundred percent, because they're a local business, um, and, and 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 that's the first thing you're going to want to optimize that, um, you know, because that is a that that's a quick win optimize that link it through to the website obviously when you add that in you use the utm tracking you know code so that you can see what it's doing also via analytics and search console um images look carpets are quite a quite a good thing um i would certainly be doing before and after images you know so people can see the quality of the work um I would probably, you know, your first thing is your, wow, I mean, it's like, where do we start really? Your top line is going to be, um, uh, you know, it's going to be welcome to Jim's, uh, Jim's carpet fitters in Wiltshire. So Wiltshire is going to be your main thing on your homepage. Uh, if it's obviously they're probably a single location, so I would make sure I've, you have their shop address in the footer. You can use structured data, local business structured data, again, with your, um, obviously in your footer, referencing their location. Uh, you can build out some uh, citations for their, you know, XYZ carpet fitters, their address, telephone number and website um that was a good start um i'm not really uh, i'm not too sure on like if there's different sections for carpet fitters um i mean i don't know if carpet fitters are just carpet fitters or do, do they have different products well if they have different types of products itself those would be services again of course remember you want to include wiltshire in there so i don't know if it's like um xyz kind of fitting i don't know if there's different fittings but if it's xyz fitting your title is obviously going to be xyz fitting wiltshire um uh you know for that particular service because wiltshire is your area um and a good thing for trades services like this is um, creating a case study section. Um, I always advocate for this. They work really well. And your case, or not really case studies, in terms of a trade, you could probably call it our work, right? And it would envision it's it's almost the same as like a blog where, and you could split it up. So let's say in Wilshire, there's particular areas which are a little bit more affluent that tend to actually, because I mean, you, you, you speak to your guy, he'll tell you what areas he tends to get most of his work in or has for however long um and uh all he all he needs to do from the you know you can create a template on on these pages and it would be whatever type of carpet or you know entire house recarpet in and you don't need to give the street but you can just use the postcode in wiltshire in um, and then create the little sort of our works. It was a four day job, what carpet they picked, right? 
um, what carpet they picked, was it the additional underlay, was it using tacts or was it some new method and, you know, give a brief, a good, a good description. You can do it before and then after. Um, and you can even put, um, you know, a, a price between or whatever the case may be, you know, he may not be comfortable putting prices down, but that, that, you know, C. So these kind of specific jobs um, are really good, especially if there's a variation. So it could be, um, I don't know, thick shagged, thick shagged carpet, and um, you know, laid uh, for, from lounge to open plan oh. kitchen or something, and then put the postcode. And then, okay, same again. What, what was the job? How long did it take? What was the description? Um, you know, uh, things like that before and after image. People really want to see these before and afters and because a lot of people will search for different variations. And of course, the same again, you're including the postcodes in, in those areas, which eventually, you know, Google My Business Machine learns from. And of course, when you start using postcodes, you're geo-targeting a lot of stuff. So, you know, that 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 will help. And you know, specifically because people search for different things. Um, I don't think, I mean, I've, I've never really, um, I've never really had carpets fitted, so I, I wouldn't like know, uh, you know, on things like this. And then on your main types of content, start answering a lot of questions. Like the first thing I would also do now is with your, with your client, um, just set up a spreadsheet. Every time he takes a phone call, he writes down what the question was, what the answer was at the end of the week, you know, put it in a Google Drive at the end of the week, end of the month, however you're working. <laughs> Can those be split into FAQs for a particular service type page, right? Because they're just short answers. Or can they actually be put into a long form bit of content? Um, so that that's great, repetitive new stuff coming in on a monthly basis. Um, and then you, you know, you'll start getting a pattern of what people are looking for, what people are, are, are needing. Um, and, and certainly from now, you know, put something into place, a little word doc for him. Every time he goes on a job, before picture, after picture, description of the job, where it was, what it was, you know, time, length, da, 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 and that starts getting uploaded. You know, he may have archived stuff of that, don't know. You always check, you know, a lot of these guys have chucked stuff on Facebook before. A lot of that can be pulled off and he can actually create things out of that. But you want to start somewhere and I'd put those into place now. As Jim would say, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wonder if Jim's locked himself out or do you think he had a stroke or something? Um, Jim has invited us to another uh and other google chat <laughs> oh has he no we're done jim my email <laughs> yeah i oh, know we're, we're done jim bye jim i guess well this this will still end up just and finish recording once we've all left i guess i think so i think if we if all of us leave then i think it will stop it will stop but and he should still have the recording jim be able to get it though uh I think so. Well, if it's, yeah, let's hope so. <laughs> let's hope so. Right. Uh, <laughs> on behalf of Jim and Dumbass, <laughs> your questions. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today. <laughs> and it's good night for me and it's good night from him. Yeah. Right. Um, I guess everyone have a fantastic Easter weekend. Yeah. Yes. Eat lots of Easter eggs. <laughs> <laughs> so shall we all disappear on the count of three? Yeah. Yeah. One, right. Two. One, two, three.